uh, thank you again. And uh, I will give a talk with nothing to say with the, with the geography. And we will say tomorrow that uh, within one uh, clinical case, we have two, two times we have in conjunction with the, all, the, all these images. So, as I'm an uh, addressable referral to, uh, I wanted to be in this uh, Congress and propose to present to you some uh, works concerning Plateau Iris. So I thank Professor Ko to invite me. Sorry. We just give you uh, a talk in two parts uh, on some plateau uh, uh, So uh, at this time we have few uh, means to observe under cement with uh, ultrasound or with uh, optical devices. Uh, ultrasound have been very useful since we have used UBM in order to focus uh, the ultrasound scans on the, on the angle. Uh, we have Artemis, which is uh, uh, quite a research. Uh, and now we have polygon devices uh, able to observe the fundus and the angle. For optical devices, we have the Shenfu camera, like the Pentacam, uh, and we have two ways with OCTs to observe the entire segment. We can use uh, posterior pole OCTs and we can focus this machine on the, on the angle, or we can use uh, specific uh, machines uh, to observe all the entire segments, like uh, OCT Visa to Casia from Tome. Uh, you can see a few examples of uh, optical imaging and you, you know that uh, with this kind of machine we can get many measurements, we can get color topography and uh, with the Patekam we have a problem with the, uh, with the angle because the ref reflection on the clara uh, disturbs the, the images and so it's not a perfect tool to observe the, the angle. Uh, when we use uh, a retinal oscillate focus on the angle, we can observe this kind of images and uh, we can use a swept source of city, so we have say, an example of a Casia swept source of city, uh, you know, uh, able to, to reconstruct a 3D image of the, of the angle. Uh, we use an Optoview system with a corner module, and uh, at this time the, uh, the Optoview is the only one with a, a module for the other segment, and you can see the resolution uh, applied to the angle, you can see the canal, the slam canal like this. But you can define, you can uh, see the limitation of the OCTs in order to observe the similar processes. With all these machines, not to sound or, or uh, OCTs, we can get uh, measurements of the angle opening. We have described many machines, but we can know that uh, practicing ultrasound or UBM or, or OCTs, we have very different situation of the angle. We have uh, insertion of the of the iris on this grass pore. We have an insertion on the X-ray processors, a very thin iris route on, on 360 degrees, and you have a very thin X-ray processors. So, uh, when we practice UBM, we can see that uh, a 
patient is not the same like the patient that, that we will see a few minutes uh, after. And more of us, uh, more of this, uh, you have a variation of the endorsement with different situation. You can see uh, light, and you can see sorry. You can see the the evolution of the of the endorsement with light and dark condition on the room. You can see this image with the with the Artemis system. And so we know that this uh, under signal move with light, move with accommodation, and move with age because uh, the, because of the of the thickening of the of the lens. And we know that in, in case of angle closure glaucoma, we have interest to observe the, the lens vault. And you can see the measurement of the lens vault. We, we draw a line between angle to angle and we measure this, this distance between this line and the anterior part of the, of the lens. And when we have a very lens vault, a very high lens vault, this is a an, 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 an second factor for the uh, closing of the, of the angle. Uh, when we look at the, the OCTs and the angle, you, see, you can see that we can detect the closure of the angle, and you can see the difference between the OCTs and between ultrasound. We, we are just a limitation of penetration, and so ultrasound is better uh, to observe the, the cell processes. Uh, one test I've been proposed by uh, Charles Pavlin when he described the UBM is a, is a dynamic test of angle closure. We can observe one angle, we put the, the UBM probe or the OCDs on one angle, you can see the angle is narrow but open, you, you make the dot in the, the room and you can observe the angle closure just in a few seconds. And so this is probably uh, the main criteria uh, in, in uh, appreciation of the risk of angle closure, even if we have measurements. The other part, part is, uh, is uh, the problem for plateau iris. Plateau iris is defined by anterior positioning of the serial processes. And you can see when you have blue iris in this situation of plateau iris anatomy, uh, you can see that we can eliminate the borders of the, of the serial processes and we are better with, uh, with the ultrasound. Uh, with this kind of situation in blue iris, we can see the complete plateau iris mechanism and it's quite easy to observe this. But when we have dark iris, it's very difficult to observe the limit of the, of the, the border of the, of the serial processes and only the, uh, the UBM can give you the response. So in terms of plateau iris, we know that the limitation of cities uh, have to, to move our exploration to UBM by waiting swap source or the swap source on but even with the swap source it's difficult. So making this uh, we are in front of this kind of situation uh, in our pro in our pro practice we can observe that um, borders of the history processes can be detected in forty two percent of our patients and we have no response in fifty eight percent of the patients. So this is the reason why uh, for each patient refer for an angle in our center practice uh, present OCT for measurement and we, we still practice UBM for the angle. With angle and uh, with the UBM and uh, with the OCTs we can observe other anatomical variations like synechia and, and, uh, and other problems and we can uh, differentiate uh, anterior positioning of iris root. You can see that we have in a very anterior insertion of the iris root and we have no plateau iris. But now uh, we have other structures that can close the, the angle. We have cysts and we have tumors. And in all these uh, different situations, you can solve the, the diagnosis. Now, focus on the plateau iris diagnosis. Uh, we can say that the clinical plateau iris classification can separate two different situations plateau iris configuration, uh, which is defined like, uh, with a narrow angle uh, on a slit lamp. Uh, examination and with the uh, venuscopy you have a double bowing of the iris and usually these patients are, are, have a reopening of the angle after uh, treatment by, by laser and plateau iris syndrome is uh, it's defined like no non reopening of the angle after uh, laser treatment. This is the only classification we have concerning plateau iris. So using UBM we can have a better approach of this risk of uh, angle closure by plateau iris mechanism 
and we can define with a OCT, with a UPM uh, approach that plateau uh, uh, iris mechanism can can be associated with angle closure, with anterior positioning of serial processes, and no serial circuits. You can see this. We have uh, a main requirement, which is the square spur. You have the square spur there. You have the angle close. You have anterior positioning of the, of the uh, serial processes, and you have no circuits. If we have, if it's not easy to, to detect the square spur, you can use this two curves. You can follow the curves of the cornea, and you can follow the curves of the the sclera and the intercept of these two curves gives you the positioning of the sclera spur. And if you draw a line on this point, on this point, you can see that the anterior positioning of the serial processes is very clear. So, as we practice many many procedures uh, each year, uh, we have followed many patients with our uh, center for narrow angle. It's just uh, ophthalmologists finding that with slit lab examination and volumoscopy. They have a doubt on uh, the risk of the uh, angle closure procedure or uh, angle closure crisis. So we practice for each patient, we practice a four meridian scan with UBM, uh, we get measurements with visant OCTs, and uh, as plateau iris seems to be very frequent in uh, Asian people and especially in Chinese people, uh, we decided to observe only Caucasian people uh, because we have mainly Caucasian people in, uh, in our country. And so we were surprised to observe the anterior positioning of the serial processes many, many times with these patients. So we have excluded uh, those patients with previous treatment, with serious cysts or with uh, other problems. And so uh, we have been able to, uh, to divide these patients in different groups. Uh, in our mind, in our mind uh, group, group zero was zero risk of plateau iris mechanism. And you can see one example of these patients. We have a narrow angle, we shut down the, the light in the room, and you can see the, the angle closure, but no risk of plateau iris because the serial processes are very posterior, very small size. And we have this definition like group zero. Group one, you have anterior positioning of serial processes, uh, you make the same test, but the angle remains open. Group 2, uh, you have anterior positioning of serial processes, you have quite closure of the, of the angle and no circus, and so this is an incomplete plateau iris mechanism. And group 3, with complete plateau iris mechanism, that responds to the definition, to the complete definition with angle closure, no circus, anterior positioning of serial processes. Uh, differentiating these patients in these uh, three groups, uh, we have this kind of results. So group zero, with patient refer for narrow angle, uh, pay attention, it's not a general population, it's population selected by ophthalmologists because they have narrow angle. And so making this, you can, you can see that uh, in our mind, in this group with no risk of plateau iris mechanism, we have 51% of patients. In group one, with anterior positioning of serial processes, have, but no angle closure in, in dark condition, we have 22% of patients. In group 3, we have incomplete plateau iris mechanism, 23% of these patients, and complete plateau iris mechanism, 4%. So you can see that we have 27% of patients that could be uh, involved in uh, under closure mechanism with anterior positioning of serial processes. And so we propose now a new classification because uh, that why risk mechanism seems to be rare, but in all practice, when we see all the patients with this anterior positioning of the, of the, of the serial processes, we have to detect patients that will not be not have a reopening of the angle after the laser. And so this classification seems to, uh, to give us a new approach to quantify the risk of no angle reopening after treatment. And so we are we are based this classification on the first criteria. Angle closure, second criteria, criteria anterior positioning of the body uh, with regard of the sperm. So this specification gives this uh, three, uh, this is four columns with grade zero, angle open or closed, it doesn't matter, but we have less than two meridians with anterior positioning of the serial processes, and so we name this group no plateau iris. Grade one, 
uh, angle is closed on less than two meridians. We have two meridians or more with other position of the, of the sorry, processes, and we can define this like plateau iris anatomy, but no risk of uh, angle closure. And grade two is to uh, close angle on two meridians. And we have three meridians of uh, under positioning of the survey processes and that, that can define and complete plateau iris mechanism. And grade three, you, uh, you have uh, nodes that uh, it's close on three meridians or more, and we have four meridians with anterior positioning, and this can define the complete plateau iris mechanism. To summarize this uh, classification, you can observe this red zero. Angle remain open with no uh, anterior positioning of the angle of the serial processes. Uh, grade one, we have very clear anterior positioning of serial processes, but no angle closure. And plateau, this is plateau iris anatomy. And uh, in this in grade two, you have very narrow angle, very uh, often uh, position anterior positioning of the serial processes. Incomplete plateau iris mechanism, and this red free with this situation of uh, under closure and uh, uh, pushing of the iris foot by the by the movement of the serial processes for this, we, we propose to name this complete plateau iris mechanism. Uh, you have to uh, you have, we have this slide to summarize all the situation: under open and no plateau iris. Uh, angle remain open but very under positioning of these processes. Red 2 with quite uh, angle closure on a few meridians and angle closure with many, many meridians. And so you have to just to uh, review this, this uh, kind of situation and we are uh, surprised by these two columns with 23% in this one and 4% in this one. That may, that can say that when we Practice uh, uh, periphery iridotomy in this, in this case, perhaps we have a risk of no treatment for a long term of the risk of uh, angle closure. And so, uh, due to the high prevalence of anterior position in our processes in, in uh, Caucasian people, uh, we propose to observe the, this, uh, these patients uh, with this classification in order to obtain the situation of the patient before treatment. Uh, when plateau iris mechanism is, uh, is yet in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the situation of the patient, uh, it's too late. So we prefer make a preventive observation of this scenario angle. And mainly when you have a failure of, uh, of a reopening of the serial processes. And so many of our doctors refer the patient when they have practice uh, uh, prefer iridotomy and we have no reopening of the angle and so UBEM is a very useful tool to observe the, the reaction of the, of the angle and to detect uh, a plateau iris mechanism or of the, of the cause of the, of the remaining of the, of the angle closure. Uh, and after this first step uh, we have follow-up patients uh, that have been referred for, by the doctors to the center who have made a diagnosis of plateau iris and uh, we have seen again this patient after treatment. And we have another study that we are going on, and it's a prospective study uh, on few patients, but we are enlarging this series. Uh, these patients have been treated by, by the doctors, and we, we have observed that all these patients have been treated by laser perverted iridotomy. So we have all these patients treated by uh, at the first step by the, by the the laser, and uh, we have 20 persons that have uh, 22 eyes that have an additional treatment, and this additional treatment can be different. Uh, it depends on the doctor, it depends on the situation and the anatomy of the, of the angle. And so, few doctors decided to practice uh, um, iridoplasty, fetal surgery, or lens, lens surgery. And so, we, we have debate to, to know do we have to. Uh, to treat with uh, iridoplasty or with uh, lens surgery, uh, we don't know. So we have uh, reviewed these patients with UBM to observe the response of this angle, this plateau iris mechanism at the beginning, and see how was the response of treatment. And so we have considered uh, as a positive response of the treatment when we have a reopening of the angle almost on half meridians. 
And so when you can observe the group one, group one was only laser treatment, and we have 33 percent of uh, reopening of the angle. When you observe the group with uh, lasers, uh, iridotomy, and iridoplasty, we have quite 60 percent of uh, reopening of the angle. In group three, we have not many patients, but we have only one eye that have reopened the angle. And group four with lens surgery, one patient or two have reopened the angle. So we have just to see some situations. You can see these uh, patients before uh, laser iridotomy, and you can see the plateau iris, the angle is closed on the four meridians, and we, we practice the, the peripheral iridotomy. We can observe the, 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 uh, the, the opening of the iridotomy, and you can observe that the angle is reopened on all the systems, or on all the meridians. So we can say that uh, even in case of plateau iris, peripheral iridotomy can be efficient can be efficient in many times. Uh, you can see this uh, modification and in this case of plateau iris mechanism diagnosed by the UBM, uh, you have a reopening of the angle in this percentage of, of patients. Uh, in few patients we have a very, uh, a very precise opening of the, of the iris, we have no doubt of the opening of the iris by the, by the laser, but the angle remains closed. So we have six eyes in this situation, so 20% of, uh, of these patients have uh, non reopening of the angle, even in case of very, very uh, you know, perfect iridotomy. Um, in few cases we have non-perforating iridotomy, or we have perforating iridotomy but just in front of the cerebral processes. And so this is one, uh, one of the reasons that we can propose to enlarge the, the opening of the iridotomy. A uh, group with laser iridotomy and iridoplasty, we have quite 60 percent percent of the patients with the reopening of the angle. And you can see the, the effect of the iridoplasty, and we can observe the, the reopening of the, of the angle. But in, uh, in this percentage of patients, we have poor reopening of the, uh, of the angle, probably because the treatment is not so efficient or not so periphery, we can observe we have the, the, the effect of the iridoplasty, but the, the hand, the, the, the fundus of the, the angle is closed, and now it is the same problem, and on this part it's very difficult. The, the choice of the, of the treatment with lens extraction is a, a, a main goal, and we think that when we have a large reopening of the angle, uh, it's due to the very len large lens vault. You can see uh, of this very large lens vault before, uh, before surgery with a, with a narrow angle, with a plateau iris, and the surgeon decided to, 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 to practice a, a lens surgery, and you can see the results with the with lens, the posterior uh, lens, and the reopening of the angle. So probably we have a relationship between the efficiency of the, of the surgery and the lens vault. When you have a very small lens vault, probably you have less effect on the reopening of the angle. Uh, group 3 uh, laser treatment and uh, lens surgery, but no reopening of the angle. And this, this is more serious, the reopening of the angle is very difficult because of synechia. And so when we decide to practice uh, uh, lens surgery, if it's too late because we have many, many things, Sinecias, it's very difficult to reopen the angle. Uh, on the last group with uh, laser and uh, filtering surgery, uh, we have few patients with reopening of the angle. You can see the you can see trabeculectomy and you can observe the opening of the angle. But in many of these patients, we have no reopening of the angle. Uh, you can see the, the surgery and you can see that the lateral iris mechanism is, remains uh, on quite all meridians. So probably uh, the, goal, the goal of the surgery is not reopening the angle, it's just to, to, to create a, a shunt. So in conclusion, you can see that uh, uh, treatment by laser with uh, iridotomy is uh, the, the first response, even in case of plateau iris. And the reason why uh, we don't have uh, any so many problems with plateau iris mechanism, because when we practice 
um, laser immunotomy, even if we ignore the, the, the anterior position in the serial processes, we, we have an effect. But uh, if we can see, if we can see that we have no reopening of the anger, you propose to practice uh, UBM to complete the treatment and uh, to decide to uh, to use a, a, a radioplasty. It seems to be efficient on a moderate plateau arrest mechanism. But, but when we have a very uh, a very strong uh, serial processes pushing the iris forward, it's very difficult for radioplasty to, to to be efficient. And let's surgery probably have been to to be, uh, have to be correct to the lens vault and fit the surgery to probably uh, surgery as uh, the last time. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Any questions? All right, Michel. Uh, those were very beautiful UPM pictures. And those were difficult to get. So, uh, the first question is that um, uh, when, when you took the different iridoplasty, I think uh, it was uh, the, the, the study was done by numerous surgeons, right? Yes. So, probably those which did not open, probably they did it a little bit anterior or near the pupillary area, not really periphery. In fact, when we see the images, you, you can easily understand that uh, if you are not uh, not completely periphery uh, on the right wrist route, it, it cannot work. Okay, yes. so yes. you have to be periphery and you have to, to to get a very strong treatment. Right. Because right. E even in ca and, and the cases when uh, radioplasty is working is when we have seen very small plateau arrest mechanism. Uh, right. If you have a very strong muscle completely rotated. Uh, Angle, it's very difficult, and, and we, we know that uh, even if it works now, in 10 yeah. years, probably that will not be the case. So, the other way to do is do two rows of iridoplasty to really uh, get it out of the angle. Uh, and probably, if, if we go to iridoplasty, we probably have to, to practice iridoplasty on few impacts, very strong impacts, and not many impacts, very small. You will, you will see tomorrow with a clinical case, one, one very interesting case. When we, when we reopen just one second, it can be efficient. The, the other question is, the classification was done on dark illumination. All of those UBM pictures were done on dark oh, illumination. Uh, yes, uh, all our procedures, uh, because with light, it tell you we have a narrow angle. Yes. Yeah, but you don't know if the, the angle be able to close. And if, if we do the reclassification, would you consider the same nickel closure still plateau iris that you have that there the yeah, group, group three or four with say nickel? So would it be this, uh, pro proper if you do if you do label them as primary angle closure? Uh, if you are in group three or four it's, it's very uh, very high risk of the virus mechanism, and so uh, this is probably in group three. We have patients who have good response with just peripheral epidotomy, uh, but in group four, mm, it's very difficult. All right, thank you.